Okay, thanks. Okay, <laughs> and as you see, this is the common work with my friends and colleagues. Some of, of them are also in this room. Uh, so, uh, and actually this topic, uh, the topic that I sent to Victoria when she asked me to, to give a talk here was a little bit longer. However, I decided to give a much more general topic and the part of this topic will be the, the, the distinguishing between two kinds of processes. And the last thing that I want to mention, actually, you can consider this presentation in some sense as a continuation of it uh, that uh, Ralph Metzler yesterday presented. He gave us a uh, fantastic overview of the possible, let's say, extension of the uh, known process, fractional Brownian motion. And actually, I will also give some extension when uh, when the, the process under consideration is based on the classical anomalous diffusion process. However, some things are changed, and now you, you will see what will change. Okay, so the agenda is relatively easy. However, uh, I want to point out some important things. So, of course, introduction and motivation. Motivation actually already was done. However, I will highlight once again why we are doing such stuff. Uh, then I will remind fractional Brownian motion, but from mathematical point of view, some equations will be there. Uh, then we are going to the new process that we actually started a few years ago, together with my colleagues from our university, but also from, from uh, another universities. And we consider the fractional Brownian motion, but in case mm. when H, so the anomalous diffusion exponent is a random variable. So this is a, Mm, new class of processes and actually we try to analyze those processes from mathematical point of view first and then we try to find how to distinguish classical anomalous diffusion process and this one that we discussed uh, in our research and then we went a step forward for multifractional Brownian motion that was already mentioned yesterday however we are analyzed also the multifractional Brownian motion with random Hurst exponent, meaning that Hurst exponent is a not random variable, is a not deterministic function, but it's stochastic process. Of course, stationary stochastic process. And we, we found very nice stochastic process that could be useful in this, in this area. At the end, I will give the, let's say, overview how to discriminate actually uh, such processes that we analyze. Fractional Brownian motion, uh, fractional Brownian motion with random Hurst exponent and multifractional Brownian motion with random Hurst exponent. Okay, so now we are going to some uh, introduction and motivation why we are doing this. Of course, we are talking about the anomalous diffusion processes and one of the processes that is useful in this area and was used in different, different areas, not only in single particle tracking, but also in the telecommunications economy uh, so it is, of course, fractional Brownian motion <laughs> proposed by Komogorov. And in the Mandelbrot work, it was used first time for the economic data. And actually, I know this process from those kinds of papers. So because I have a PhD in financial mathematics, so, so I know this from this kind of papers. Okay. And what we know about the fractional Brownian motion, you are familiar. However, I want to highlight that the important parameter here is the uh, Hurst exponent, so this is h value between zero and one. And of course, we know when h is equal one half, we have a uh, ordinary Brownian motion. Uh, when h is between zero and one half, we have the subdiffusive fractional Brownian motion, and then we have the superdiffusive Brownian motion. However, we recognize that fractional Brownian motion, this is a really nice process, and we know many things about this process. Yesterday, we also discussed that this is Gaussian and so on and so on. However, uh, the, the new experiments indicate that if we have a one single trajectory, then let's say fractional Brownian motion is fine. However, if we have a many experiments, so many trajectories of the same experiment, sorry, then we observe some some strange, meaning that H parameter that we obtain from the, from the trajectories are not exactly the same, which is obvious because if you have a finite number of, of data, however, uh, it may have some distribution. And of course, this phenomena may be related to different things. The first thing is that 
the obtained value, this is the value of the estimator of H. This is true. However, the other possibility is that maybe this phenomena could be related to the case when H, this is not constant value, but it is the random variable. And it was for us motivation to analyze such kind of process from mathematical point of view first. Okay, uh, so it was the motivation. However, the idea of process with random parameter, of course, this is not new idea. Once again, in insurance, we know this the process which is called mixed Poisson process, the same idea. The counting process, this is a random variable. And of course, this process has different properties than the classical process that we know in insurance. And actually, in our research, first we analyze this kind of process, so fractional Brownian motion with um, random exponent. And our analysis show that we have a two important properties which are not observable, visible if for the fractional Brownian motion. So accelerating diffusion, meaning that the MSD changes uh, and changes the, the, the behavior and the uh, transition, uh, transistent, uh, persistent transition, sorry. That means that the autocovariance function changes the sign. Yesterday, uh, Ralph showed us that if H is between zero and one half, we have a negative value of autocovariance. If H is greater than one half, we have a positive, always positive. Now we observe a little bit different behavior that the, that the persistent transition appears, meaning the sign of the autocovariance may change. Okay, and then, of course, as mathematicians always do, so we wanted to make the model much more complicated, so we, and for us, the natural step was to consider multifractional Brownian motion, uh, which is defined by the Hurst exponent being a deterministic function, and we were starting to think how will have, what will happen if instead of the deterministic function, we will take stochastic process, and of course, we, we started to analyze this kind of process, but of course, at the end, there is a practical question, practical application, how to distinguish such kinds of process. Okay, uh, so this is a definition of the fractional Brownian motion. So here we consider the, the integral definition, so the integral representation. Uh, so this definition you also know. We know that this is, of course, self-similar Gaussian process. Uh, Self-similarity means the scaling. This is important uh, if we calculate some, some important things related to this process. Of course, we always assume or very often assume and consider fractional Gaussian noise. That means the, um, the, um, the, uh, the process which is a uh, so uh, differentiated process, let's say. And this is a stationary process that for us is fine. And we know that, that the second moment of the fractional Brownian motion, this is a power law function, and this is the reason why it belongs to the large class of anomalous diffusion processes. We know the, the form of the autocovariance of the increment process, and we know the asymptotic behavior, and this is, this is more or less obvious. Okay, and now we are going to the step forward, as I said, so we considered we consider the fractional Brownian motion with random Hurst exponent. So if you see here definition number six and definition number one, they are more or less the same. There is one difference. The difference is in this notation because now Carly H means that H is a random variable. So the definition is more or less the same. So, so this is the formula, integral formula. However, instead of random variable, uh, instead of constant H, we have a random variable, H being a random variable. Of course, we cannot take all random variables that we know because there are uh, still uh, restrictions. So H should be between zero and one. So of course, we should remember about that. And one of the examples that I will show is related to this case. Okay, what we assume more for simplicity, we assume that H is of course, independent on the, on the Brownian motion that we have here. And of course, from mathematical point of view, we can calculate some nice properties of this process in general form. Here, as you see, I am not assuming any specific distribution. I assume that we have a random variable H that is defined on the interval zero one, and we have the, the assumption that the density exists, but it could be also the discrete 
random variable. So the probability density function of the new process, we call it FBMRE because of the random exponent. So this is the uh, PDF of the new random variable and the formula comes exactly from the total probability law. We also uh, could uh, analyze and calculate the cube moment. And in the special case, we calculated also the second moment. So Q is equal to two. Then we have the second moment. So in, this is MSD. And as you see, this MSD of the new process is expressed in the language of the moment generating function of random variable H. Uh, H. And here you have the argument of this random, of this, of this moment generating function. Okay, so moment generating function definition is here. This is, this is the classical characteristic of random variables for which the moment generating function is. All right, and last but not least, we also try to find the general formula for the autocovariance function of the increment process of FBMRE. Important property, uh, the increment process for this, for this, uh, FDMRE is also a stationary process, which is good. Uh, in this case, the autocovariance function depends only on, uh, on this, this tau, on this lag, let's say. And this is the final formula. You see, once again, this autocovariance is expressed also in the language of the uh, moment generating function of the random variable X, uh, H. <laughs> Based on, on those properties that I presented in the general form, We've, uh, we found that accelerating diffusion exists. So you will see in one minute, let's say, uh, for, for special case of, of random variable age, but also the persistent transition. And in our papers that I will give the references at the end, we have a nice plot prepared by Michal, who is here, uh, when we clearly see this nice property, very important property. Okay, and now we are going to the special case to show how it works in practice, and this case will be also important in the next steps of, of this, let's say, story. Okay, so uh, we consider in our research different uh, examples of the random variable age, but the most important for us was the beta distribution. So be this beta distribution that is defined on the interval H1 and H2, because in the real data, we see that there are some restrictions of the uh, on the uh, on the estimated ages, so therefore we decided to consider this representation of beta distribution. Okay, why why beta distribution? This is the first of all. <clears throat> this is a random variable which is defined on the Phoenix support. We need this in our definition. Uh, we have out here two parameters, actually four, but the H1 and H2 they are just you know uh, the boundaries. Uh, the parameters responsible for the shapes are alpha and beta, and mm, they give us the flexibility, flexibility of this distribution. In, in one minute, you will see that we, depending on alpha and beta, we, we can have unimodal, bimodal distribution, and the different, different properties. So this is, this is also very important uh, properties. So the, the beta distribution has a um, PDF given in explicit form. For us mathematicians, this is fine because based on that, we can calculate something. So this is also another reason why we use this beta. And you will see also that this beta distribution also very well fits to the uh, experimental data, which is also good for us. Okay, so what we know about this distribution? Okay, so this is a PDF. As I said, here we consider the beta distribution defined on the interval H1 and H2. Of course, here, because we are considered this FBMRE, H1, H2 are between zero and one, and of course, H1 is smaller than H2. We know what is the form of the moment generating function. Of course, it is expressed in the language of some special function. However, anyway, we have something. So this is good for us. And what we could calculate. Here I, I decided not to present the long formulas that we calculate. This is not uh, important, very important here, but, uh, but I take together the, this that we, we could obtain. So uh, PDF of the new process, so FBMRE is given in integral form because we have this, this form from the general formula. Okay, so we could ca uh, calculate MSD. So asymptotics of MSD for the new process. And as you see, 
for short times it, it behaves like t to the power 2 h1 when h1 this is the smaller exponent and for the long times this is the let's say opposite value here we have also this logarithm please remember about that so we observe also so this is the accelerating diffusion so we have a different behavior for long and short times and we also show that this is a persistent transition so autocovariant function of the increment process is changing the, the the sign is changing the sign okay and now we are going to some pictures i i think it would be interesting to for you so in this in this work we also uh, claim that beta distribution is good because it is it can be fitted to to some real experimental data in this paper actually we analyzed two kind of data one uh, taken from the experiment by uh, performed by uh, professor wagner and in the research group of uh, professor Rebeck. and here what we have we had uh, here uh, two dimensional trajectories uh, uh, so the number of trajectories is here 532 and the length of each trajectory was about 30, uh, 300 and for each trajectory separately we estimated the h value here by using the bayesian analysis and we plotted the pdf so the the histogram of the estimated value and we check what kind of distribution can be fitted so is behind so actually we try to 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 check if beta could be considered and this is the fitted beta distribution here you have the alpha and beta parameters estimated uh, for the for the data and as you see this is not bad let's say but from the statistical point of view for us this is not enough looking that the pdf is more or less okay with the estimated pdf we also try to uh, use some statistical test uh, checking if the beta distribution with those parameters is rejected or not at a given confidence level and actually the Komogorov test uh, Smirnov test does not reject the hypothesis and the p-value was about 0 0.25 meaning that we can consider that this distribution can be used for this data of course from the statistical point of view we cannot say that for 100 percent this is the best distribution however the hypothesis is not rejected meaning that we can think about this distribution for this data all right so the second data set that we had here we had from from uh, from the experiment performed by, by professor weiss and uh, professor Kraft, who is also here and here we have a uh, much more trajectories but uh, but they were not very long so 100 and once again for each trajectory we estimated the parameter uh, here by using msd approach and once again we plotted the histogram and we fitted the beta distribution here as you see the parameters are a little bit different and at the first point of view we see we see that the distribution the distributions are uh, close however we also check by using the the statistical test if the hypothesis of of beta distribution is rejected or no uh, and here once again it's not rejected so for us it was the confirmation that this this is reasonable to analyze this kind of distribution in this in this new process okay and now the the question appears how to distinguish if you have a many trajectories many trajectories of course there, there is a natural question and natural problem how to distinguish if we are considered the we have a data coming from the model let's say pure model so fractional Brownian motion or data coming from the new model that we consider of course as i said at the beginning even if you have very long trajectories you always obtain different value of h because this is a statistic yes? so number of data is finished however this let's say the distribution of the h value may come from the finite number of data that we have in each trajectory or from this phenomena that we consider here and actually it was the question that we wanted to solve how to distinguish how to find that there is something more than classical uh, classical uh, fractional brownian motion and actually here this is the equation but i will try to explain in our previous work many years ago 
also with Michał and others, we analyzed the statistics called uh, express, let's say, express in the language of the quadratic forms. So one of the statistics is autocovariance function. So let's just imagine, so now let's just forget uh, for a few minutes about this FBMRE and other stuff. So now we are consider some, let's say, process or time series, and we consider the statistic, which is called autocovariance function. Yes, so we assume, of course, that this is a stochastic process uh, behind. And the autocovariance function for this process, so the, they, are, they are random variables corresponding to, the, to so the, the points in the trajectory. So this autocovariance function can be expressed in this, in this form. So this is quadratic form. This is quadratic form. And uh, this A, this is a matrix. And if the process is Gaussian, so Y is Gaussian process, so has a finite uh, Gaussian distribution, then we know much more than only the representation given express form, meaning we know what is the distribution of this, of this guy. In this case, the distribution is called generalized his squared distribution, which is easily defined. And based on that, in our previous research, we could find the statistical test for distinguishing Gaussian processes. Because depending on the autocovariance function of the process, this A is different. So that, mean, that means in each case, when we have a different Gaussian processes, the distribution is different. So this is a beautiful basic for the, for the test, statistical test, how to distinguish different Gaussian processes. It was in our previous research. Now, we wanted to use exactly the same methodology, however, to distinguish FBM and FBMRE. What is the difference? The difference is such that that FBM is a Gaussian process. So we know what is the distribution of this guy because this is still generalized his square distribution. However, FBMRE is not Gaussian as we know. So the di distribution for sure is different. You will see. However, this is still Gaussian. This is still, um, this is still um, uh, quadratic form, but this quadratic form is not going to the generalized his square distribution. And actually, this was the base for the distinguishing such processes. So here you have the example how the PDF of this autocovariance function, please remember, it depends on tau. Okay, so how the PDF looks like uh, for the FBM um, uh, and FBMRE in two cases, two-point distribution and beta distribution. Of course, here we are analyzing the beta distribution and you see that for tau equal one, the differences are huge, meaning that we can use this, this uh, statistic for distinguishing. Okay, so as I see, Vittoria is, is uh, giving me a sign. So here I present the, that we can distinguish the processes. So here for tau equal one, the map, so this is the power of the test really, so that the color, yellow color really, really show us the differences. So this is the basic, okay. So maybe I'm going to the last but not least. I think so multifractional Brownian motion. So H is a deterministic function. However, here we are giving the stochastic process. Stochastic process that we choose is a smooth telegraphic process. And why this process? Because the stationary distribution of this process is a beta distribution. This is the same distribution as we had in our, in our previous case. So now, uh, so here we have some parameters. However, here you, you can see the exemplary trajectories of the smooth telegraph pro telegraphic process and the corresponding, the multifractional Brownian motion with, with those uh, parameters, so with those uh, uh, process. And uh, now I am going to the last thing. Because, of course, you may ask how to distinguish FBM, FBMRE, and the multifractional Brownian motion process with random exponent. So here we propose a relatively intuitive procedure, uh, which is based on the autocovariance function of the estimated age for each trajectory. The, the details you can find in our papers. However, here I will show how it works. If we have the FBM, then H in theory should be constant, meaning that the autocovariance function taken from different time points should be zero. And this is exactly this that we have. Uh, if we have the FBMRE, then the 
h is a random variable, meaning that the autocovariance function for h for different time points should be constant but not zero. And this is exactly this case. So this is variance of this h. But when we have the uh, case with multifractional Brownian motion and we estimate h, h is a stochastic process, stationary stochastic process. We know what is the autocovariance function and it decays to zero, but this is not constant, not zero and not constant. And actually in our case, we analyzed four data sets. Two of them were from the biological experiments. One, of, uh, one is related to the economy and one related to the climate data. And we recognize that such behavior which corresponds to the simulated, simulated data. So it is the end of the story. Thank you very much. If you want to find more details, so here are, are our papers when we try to analyze such kind of processes. And of course, there is still much to do. Thank you very much.